This conference will now be recorded. Hello, this is Patricia Brendel, the Director of Elections at the City of Manassas Park, presenting the budget line item needs that we have for FY 2021. Um, we're going to start off with line item 1301, which is our electoral board part-time. This covers all of the staff for the registrar's office, including the deputy registrar, the assistant registrar, um, we have two assistants. And then there's some additional positions this time for them. They're called four seasonal staff members, and I'll explain that when we get to them. First, we're going to start off with the deputies' registrar's hours. Um, they're increased due to the presidential election we're coming up on. Starting in July, we're going to get really busy with applications. We already are getting absentees for that election. And this is going to allow additional hours for my deputy to come in. Um, they, are, they are staggered as we get closer to um, the absentee time. Now, what's new is we have no excuse voting that, that kicks into this election. It is a full 45 days where all voters, that is all voters are qualified to vote. Um, we'll call it early voting for the purposes of our citizens. Uh, you do no longer need an excuse. Um, you can do it in person, and you can do it by mail. So we're going to get very busy very quickly. So she has additional hours to cover for not only um, in-person voting, but for training hours. We have prep for the election. So we've had to, and we always have in the past, increase our hours for our deputy and our assistant registrar positions. Um, this time, we have a part-time assistant registrar who is going to need to go permanent full-time. This person's been here for about three months now, has been training about 12 hours a week. Um, he's going to be responsible for all of the daily activities for voter registration, from printing and processing to mailing notices, uh, to filing and scanning of all of the applications that are gonna come in for voter registration. Um, we also know that there's going to be automatic registration kicking in through the DNB. So everybody who goes through there, 17 and above, will now be automatically registered unless they opt out. He's also going to be taking care of um, the absentee in person that's going to be going on in our office. He, he's going to have a lot to do. Um, and so we have, we have the need to make him permanent. With the no excuse and the 45 days coming in, the, the responsibilities in our office have shifted a great deal. We are now having to prep for a future election within five days after the old election's over. It's going to take a lot of our time to be prepared for the next election. We also have to have our training kicked out, planned, and done a month um, earlier than usual. They have to be done before the um, the no excuse voting kicks in 45 days out. So we will be planning for those. We have a whole bunch of other work that me and my, my deputy will be working on. So this person's position, the assistant, um, needs to be there. They need to be trained. They need to understand federal and state codes and laws. And that's what we're doing right now, training this person in this position. They're also, as time goes on, they're going to take on more responsibility from candidate processing and all the other stuff that we do. The other four seasonal staff members, these are people typically, we're hoping to use officers of elections that we currently have, they're going to come in during the 45 days. And we're going to have to stagger them in to sometimes it'll be two a day based on when we think our need's going to be. It could also be four a day when we get closer to the election. We're expecting very heavy volume, not only in person, but now we're expecting the mail volume to go up. That's something that I take care of as the registrar. You don't want many people involved in that. But again, we've got to have these positions staffed so that we can make sure that we don't have lines going out the doors and that people are treated fairly and efficiently. The second item is professional services, line item 3160. We've asked for $5,105. This is only an increase of $390. Um, our electronic poll book vendor charges this every year for software rights to use um, the, the software, and the price has increased. Line item 3600 is advertising. We had originally asked for $1,200, but due to the fact that we're no longer moving, 
Uh, we can take out advertising, and now we're down to 700. So we're actually saving the city for what we need there. Line item 5 to 10, which is postage. We had asked for uh, $5,924 for FY21, but we want to increase that by $530. Um, we're expecting a lot of mail ballots because of the coronavirus. And we wanted to make sure we had enough money to mail 1,200 absentee ballots out. The problem is we now have to include postage for the voter to mail it back. So we did increase that. We're asking for $530 more. That will get us to 1,200 voters um, a mailing out for them. We typically go about 400. We are a little nervous that if the state or the federal government implement vote by mail, that we would have to mail out over 8,300 um, ballots, and that is not included in this amount. I don't feel comfortable asking for it to be included because I don't know for sure if it's going to be used. Line item 6001, which is office supplies, we are also trying to make sure that we are prepared should we have that onslaught of absentee ballots? So we've asked for an increase of $500. Um, we, we already have asked for 1285. That's our typical ask for office supplies. Well, we know we're going to need more envelopes. So we've asked for 500 more. That brings us to a total of 1785. Um, again, if they go to vote by mail or citizens find out they can, they can automatically vote by mail and they don't want to come in anymore, they can do this. So, we need to make sure we have enough envelopes. And they're also asking us to make sure that they're pre-sealed so we don't have to lick and they don't have to lick and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, that's that's an explanation of that. The last one I have is the line item 3,500 for printing. Uh, we'd asked for $6,053. This included redistricting costs of 1247. We decided that for the purpose of trying to keep a flat budget that we would evidently not spend it. We're hoping we don't need to at all. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that we had enough um, money in there to, to run for the printing in case we have to do more notices for the COVID or anything like that if the state requires us to do that. So for our total for that budget, Line, but that line item, sorry, we need $4,086. Again, we can revisit the redistricting costs if we should need it in December, as the city manager said he would do. Um, but again, that's what we have, and I'm, I welcome any questions. Thank you.